Hi everyone, it's Katie and today is Vlogmas Day 19. It is dark outside not because I'm up really early, but because I'm starting this vlog very late. It's already about 9 o'clock at night. I've spent the whole day in my room tidying up my bookshelves um, and just organising stuff. Now that I'm going back to uni next year, I just felt like I wanted to get this room kind of organised a bit better. Um, seeing as I haven't vlogged all day, I might do a request that I got last week, um, which was to do a bookshelf tour. So now that my bookshelves are all organised, well, as organised as someone like me is going to make them, I'm not someone who puts them in alphabetical order or anything like that. I basically just put them on however they fit best on the shelves. So, let's do a bit of a bookshelf tour. When you first enter my room, there is like a two-tier bookshelf here. This one isn't particularly interesting, so we won't spend a lot of time here. It's basically just um, the stuff that I use a lot regularly, so a lot of notebooks, um, diaries and things, um, and then also <laughs> my good old introduction to Marxism that I got when I first really got into activism, um, and Moonology, because I reference that book a lot. Then down on the second shelf, <laughs> It's a bunch of CDs. It's quite dusty though. Um, and then here's some just some more folders. But let's move on to the more interesting stuff. Um, this bookshelf has an extended base and a drawer at the bottom. So this is where I have my altar and in the drawer is I just have you know all the altar stuff that I'm not currently using. Up the top though um, is basically just tarot decks in their bigger boxes that don't fit on my other little tarot shelf and then my tarot guidebooks um like tarot deck guidebooks the individual guidebooks um and then some extra journals that aren't in use this shelf i think is going to get cleared off as well um not this stuff this stuff i use this is like my ointments balms and essential oils this stuff though i haven't been able to touch in about six or eight months um i used to love making my own incense and then burning it on charcoal. I loved it. Um, I've always had asthma um, and that was just something I had to manage with, you know, making my own incense. But the last six to eight months, it's just been so bad that I just can't. My hay fever and asthma are just too bad. So it's been all about mists and oils and stuff for me. This stuff hasn't been touched. So I'm thinking I might just have to get rid of it. Um, but anyway, that's a topic for another day. This shelf is basically at the moment stuff I want to read um, yeah that's pretty much most of it or stuff that I kind of go to over in this corner is mostly journals this is a beautiful um, like handmade little book of shadows grimoire that I got quite a while ago and it's a bit of like an art project for me um, and then these are like just diaries journals whispers of the goddess um, by Carol Anzalotti. This is a beautiful little anthology of poetry and stuff as well. Um, what else is interesting? Uh, another Lilith book. I have quite a few of books about Lilith. This one I haven't finished. I struggle to get through it. Well, it is quite an academic text, but that in itself, you know, hasn't never stopped me before. Um, I think what I find most difficult about it is the fact that the author seems really very critical of the feminist interpretation like the modern feminist interpretation of Lilith and I understand that that interpretation of Lilith isn't necessarily factually correct um, but I think that he completely neglects any validity that that approach has um, so I'm finding that a little bit difficult because that is why I read about Lilith um, then I have um, my new Harry Potter books, The Cursed Child and Fantastic Beasts screenplay. Um, Krampus the Yule Lord. <laughs> this is a novel that was suggested to me, recommended to me ages ago. I don't remember by whom. Um, and every year I plan on reading it at Yule. And every year at Yule, I can't read. I've spoken before about how I go through phases where I just, I can't read. Um, and there's a few different reasons for that. But every year. Every year, I haven't been able to read it, so maybe 2017 is my year to read Krampus. Um, what else is interesting? Oh, The Dark Emu. I'm really excited about this. I bought this while I was in Bateman's Bay. It's a pretty new book, I think. Um, basically, it's a restoring, not even a restoring, a retelling of the 
history um, of the Aboriginal people in Australia. Then I have a book of pagan prayer, which is exactly what it sounds like. Um, Journey to the Dark Goddess is a book I'm really excited about as well. Um, I bought this, gosh, maybe like about eight months ago, just before I stopped being able to read last time. Um, but I am starting to be able to read again, um, slowly. It's taken quite a while this time, which is a bit frustrating, but this is a book I'm really excited about. Um, <laughs> Meeting Fairies. This book is <sighs> up there with my favourite books ever. I just adore this book. It is out of print and it's a bit hard to come by. I have two copies. I've lent one out to a friend. It's just the most charming, amazing story I've ever read. Um, it's by R. Ogilvy Crombie and basically he just retells his experience of meeting nature spirits and it's just the best thing ever. And we have Witches and Wizards by Lucy Cavendish which is a great book um, and I love it and I'm pretty sure I've done a review of it. Um, if I have I'll leave a link. Um, I know I've spoken about it quite a bit. Um, then we have The New Hermetics which is the book that I was reading when I stopped being able to read. <laughs> so I'm about halfway through, a third of the way through and I was really enjoying it. Um, it was kind of, you know, that really kind of traditional Kabbalah, um, hermeticism approach to magic and practice, but in a much more accessible modern way. And I was really enjoying it. So I'll have to get back into that. But I, I don't know, do you guys find it hard to start reading, you know, where you left, left off when it's been months. I always find that really difficult. Beyond Religion is another one I'm really excited about. It talks about eight alternative paths to the sacred, one of which is the feminine, and we've got the arts, the body, psychology, mythology, nature, relationships, and dark nights of the soul. And even just that idea itself just really resonates and appeals to me. So this is definitely a book I'm excited about. Jailbreaking the Goddess um, I got just the other day and then I have a few books that I found at Savers that all look really interesting as well. Um, the Hermetica I've already read and I really enjoyed that but I want to read it again. Um, up here um, <laughs> I have a bunch of old um, I used to collect these rust dogs. Aren't they cute? I don't think you can get them anymore but I have a bunch of them and they all have their own little names. This is Buddy. Oh they're so beautiful. I just love them. I used to, uh, I think I was about seven when I started collecting them. Um, and every time I had 10 or $15, I would go and try and find a new one. And so I have like a heap of them. I have the Mary L Tower up there that a friend gave me, Gemma gave me, um, that I haven't been able to get into just yet. It just feels a bit too intense for me at this point. I mean, I haven't been able to read books. I just feel like that's something I need to be able to do for that deck, but I am looking forward to it. And it's absolutely beautiful. And then of course, my favorite thing in this room is my cloth bound gold embossed box set that Blair bought me for my 21st birthday. It's Harry Potter books. Um, I'll try and get one out. So they've got the old, like the original image on them. And then they're like gold embossed of her signature. And they're just so beautiful. They even have like a little bookmark ribbon. I don't know, they just, I think, <laughs> my favorite present that anyone's ever bought me um they even have like the gold edging on the paper for a while i thought they were too good to read but i just get so much joy out of having that cloth bound book in my hand so i make a pretty conscious effort of rereading harry potter Ho once a year if not once a year definitely once every two years i'll read all seven books um i didn't this year because as i said i haven't been able to read um, but that's definitely something I'll be doing in 2017. Okay, so this shelf um, is my tarot books. A lot of these I've gotten from Savers or otherwise secondhand. Um, a few of these I've been given. Um, I have a few of these Tarot Psychology by Robert Wang. Where's the other one here? The Jungian Tarot. Because um, I do have the Jungian Tarot. Um, so I have two of the books. Because there's a whole bunch of books that go with that deck. It's a really interesting little project that Robert Wang has undertaken there. Uh, the Tarot Revealed by Fenton, uh, what's his name? Paul Fenton Smith. This I think is my favorite tarot book. It's the one that I go back to all the time. Um, this one I found, yeah, I got at Savers and I fell in love with it. And then um, someone was selling the um, second copy, the um, like the second book, Tarot Masterclass and the um, 
the same one but in like the matching the newer printing um, and so she gave me both of them for the same price. So I have two of that book, but it is my favourite. Um, Tara for Yourself by Mary Kay Greer. I got this second hand at the Theosophical Society. And it is probably my other favourite tarot book. It's really, really great. I love that one. Tarot Tells a Tale. Um, this is an interesting and kind of different tarot book. Um, what does it say? Explore three card readings through familiar stories. And basically, yeah, um, the author draws three cards and then tells a story. Um, so it is, it's a different and interesting way of learning the tarot. The new Lo Scarabio, like textbooks basically, um, I'm not super impressed with those, um, but let's move on. <laughs> this shelf is pretty much just Margaret Atwood. <laughs> um, if you didn't know, Margaret Atwood is absolutely 100% my favourite author of all time. When I was 15 I read um, The Handmaid's Tale. For the first time where is it the handmaid's tale um and yeah what can i say i was head over heels in love from that moment on um so i have yeah i, I don't think i have all of her books um she has a lot of books she even has like children's books i have a few of like her poetry collections and things as well a lot of my favorite books of hers like i love oryx and crake um year of the flood mad adam that's like a trilogy um, and I love The Heart Goes Last and I love Oryx and Crake. I mean, The Handmaid's Tale, sorry. A lot of the ones that I love are her dystopian science fiction, speculative fiction sort of books. Um, but she has very, very feminist leanings. Um, and she's just brilliant. What can I say? I just, I adore Margaret Atwood. So yeah, a whole shelf pretty much dedicated to Margaret Atwood. Oh, and then... I don't know if you guys, is this an Australian book? I'm not sure. I had a black dog. Um, this is just a beautiful little book, picture book about the experience of depression. Um, it's beautiful. Over here I have my Anne of Green Gables, my really pretty um, picture book that I found at Savers the other day. And I was so excited to discover that there's actually a second Anne of Green Gables book. I had no idea. Um, and I was actually quite sad that I've nearly finished the Anne of Green Gables, like the actual novel, um, when I stumbled upon this, so I'm quite happy now. <laughs> and then the Book of English Magic. This is a great book. I love this book. Um, it's basically just kind of like a history, kind of feels like a bit of a trivia book as well. Like it's just like a little bit of everything about English magic. It talks about, I remember it talks about John Dee and it talks about fey lines and witches and wizards. Like it's just, it's, alchemies in here everything just a little bit of everything it's really interesting it's a great book down on this third shelf um i don't know this isn't anything in particular let's start over this side this is um fiction mostly i think um what have we got lolita um this is going to be quite controversial but that's actually one of my favorite books yago i bet no one's heard of this <laughs> Yago by Susan Jacqueline, um, or Jacqueline Susan, sorry. Um, this was my mother's favourite book when she was growing up, and then I read it, and it's now one of my favourite books, and my brother read it, and it's his one of, one of his favourite books. But it's out of print and really hard to find. It's such a good book. <laughs> um, it is dated. Um, it's a bit of a science fiction love story. Um, I don't know how to explain it without giving too much away, but if you ever come across it, just pick it up because it's brilliant. Um, and if you happen to hate it, let me know and I'll buy the copy off you. <laughs> um, oh, Rebecca is another one of my absolute favourite books of all time. I think my favourite books ever would be The Handmaid's Tale, Oryx and Crake, Rebecca and Yago. Can I pick four favourite books ever? Oh, and... Meeting Fairies by Argo Ogilvy Crumby. I have five favourite books. <laughs> um, then I have a bunch of John Green books. Um, I love the Vlogbrothers. Um, and I do really like his books. I'm not like... I don't think they're above criticism. <laughs> um, but I read them when I was in hospital. Um, and they were just really easy, great... Just they were great for that situation for me. Um, so I do, I do really love them. Story of Bee by Daniel Quinn. I haven't read this yet, but I 
I had a really strong love-hate relationship with Ishmael, his first book. Um, it was brilliant and it made me think about things in new ways um, and I loved it, but I did not like the conclusions he came to. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was like this really strong reaction I had to this that book. Um, so I do really want to read this one, but I just, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> Witch Lilith, I've done a big review on that book. One of my favorite books ever. Can I, can that be number six? Um, really just a great, great book. Um, Touch with Fire by Kay Redfield Jamison. This isn't my favorite of her books. What was the other one? Mad, it's something to do with madness. Basically Kay Redfield Jamison is a, I don't know if she's still alive, is, was, I don't know, um, a psychiatrist in the, oh goodness, it's been so long, in the like 70s or something, um, but she had a very, very serious case of, back then, manic depression, um, bipolar, um, and her books are just amazing. Um, you know, they come from a really scientific, psychological, psychiatric viewpoint, but then they still have this really personal, heartbreaking often touch. It's just amazing. This book, Touch With Fire, is more about um, the creativity that a lot of people think come with bipolar. That is a um, discussion we could have for another time. It's an interesting book. Her other one that I, I'm, it's not mad, something to do with madness. Um, that is my one of my favorite books. Um, the Book of Lilith, I think I did a review of this book as well. If I didn't, I spoke about it in like a um, favorites or something. This is a really great book as well. Um, Living with Bipolar, I read a lot of books when I first got diagnosed. Obviously I'm just that sort of person. A lot of them made me angry, a lot of them made me feel really terrible about myself, a lot of them made me feel like I was a hopeless case. Um, this book was the only one that really gave me hope without invalidating what I was experiencing. Am I going mad? This was another one of my favorite books. This is another one that I read when I was hospitalized for the first time after my suicide attempt. I haven't read it for quite a few years though um, and I feel like I need to reread it because I talk about it quite a bit but it's been a long time since I've read it. Um, and I just wonder whether I might come to different conclusions about it now, given, you know, a few years of extra wisdom. I don't know. I just, I need to reread that book. Oh, the places you'll go. <laughs> this is the old copy that we had as kids. This is one of my favorite books ever. It's just life, isn't it? Dr. Zeus is brilliant to begin with, but this book just kind of stays with me. Um, and... I read this book a lot. Uh, if you've never read this book, you can get this book for like five or ten dollars. So just do yourself a favor. So now we're getting into the corner. This is the second from the bottom shelf. Over here we have Paganism and Pagan Spirituality by Joyce and River Higginbotham. Um, I love these books, especially Paganism, the first one. Um, this is a book, this is my favorite 101 paganism book. I've said that many times on my channel. Um, it's a book that I go back to regularly. It's a great, great resource. Pagan Cosmology. This I got, um, at the recommendation of Anya Orga, who spoke about this book on her channel. Um, it's written by an Australian, um, Glennis Livingstone, and it is really quite dense but it's totally brilliant. I want to read it again because it has been quite a while, but I got a lot out of it, but I was still quite at the beginning of my path. So I do definitely, definitely want to reread it. It's kind of in two sections. Um, I remember one section was kind of more about the wheel of the year and celebrating Sabbaths. And the other was more about um, goddess, earth-centered religion, I guess, um, more more um, theoretically, I guess, um, is the word. Imagine a woman in love with herself. I did a review of this book, totally loved it, read it so quickly, but it just was very touching. 
Instant Magic was a book that I read um, for Tara Incognita had a little book club for a little while um, and this is a book that we read. Um, I'm not crazy about Penzac's work but I didn't mind this book. Energy Essentials for Witches and Spellcasters by Maya Om. This was an interesting easy read but it was really good it was really engaging um, and quite useful too. Um, what else have we got? Um, oh <laughs> this is another book that's one of my favorites. I think this is a book that I spoke about in my I have a video that's like my favorite spiritual pagan books um, that I've read. goes through different myths and stories and pulls out you know their dynamic empowered female feminist message from those stories. It's a great little book. I found it at Savers um, and I'm really glad that I did because I've never heard of it but I loved it. So down here, apologies for the lighting but we are on the floor and in the corner of my bedroom at 10 o'clock at night. Um, I have three Bibles, you know, as you do. This one I found at Savers as well um, is like a, it's, the, it is the whole Bible but it's not in the right order. Basically it's kind of separated into days to help you read it the whole Bible in a year because um, reading the Bible is something that I you know I ideally I do want to do um, but you know given that I go through three to six months a year where I can't read at all and I have all of these other books I want to read um, it's not always a priority um, and then this one was one that our my um, my partner Blair's family sent us they're Jehovah Witnesses um, and so they sent us this new Bible that they got um, I think hoping that we would read it and see the light. Um, I kept it because I am genuinely interested and that is something that I do want to do one day um, out of interest and, you know, learning. <laughs> um, and then I have a few Aboriginal books. Um, this is something I struggle with um, because I want to be respectful and I want to read respectful and authentic books. And a lot of books that you find... They might seem like positive towards the Aboriginal cultures, but they're still written by a white guy in the 1950s who basically listened to some Aboriginal myths and then, you know, spun his own language around it to make it fit Christianity. There's a lot of books out there like that. Um, so I have a few here, but I tend to want to research them quite a bit before I get into them just to make sure that I'm not, you know taking on a whole bunch of whitewashed history more than I already have just from living in my culture. The Spiral Dance, um, that's a book I read right back when I first started getting into paganism and witchcraft um, and I really did enjoy it. Obviously it's dated and it has some of its flaws but um, this 20th anniversary edition Starhawk has actually kind of annotated quite a bit um, and in quite a few places she does kind of correct herself to be a lot more inclusive than she might have been originally. Um, so by no means is it still above, you know, criticism or whatever, but I did really enjoy it for what it is. Um, I think it's a really important part of pagan and feminist spirituality history. Um, then I have a Peter Pan book. <laughs> Peter Pan is kind of like my Alice in Wonderland. A lot of people are super into Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland used to just creep me out. Peter Pan though, I mean, I really didn't like Peter himself, but Peter Pan, the story, was so magical and so enthralling to me. Um, so I found this book one time at Savers, of course, and it's just beautiful. Um, yeah, look at that. Amazing. <laughs> um, and then I have a couple of Christopher Penzac books. Um, I have read, what is it, The Inner Temple of Witchcraft and The Outer Temple of Witchcraft. Um, I got them from the library or did I have them on Kindle? I don't remember. Um, and I liked some of it and really disliked other parts of it. I guess that's how I feel about Christopher Penzac. Where he's good, he's really good, but then he just says some stuff that really just doesn't sit well with me. Um, this book, though, I do remember really enjoying. Um, it's kind of more just a general take, t general look at a bunch of different views on the universe and the world and how magic and spirituality exist for different cultures. Um, I don't know, it was, I don't, it's been a while since I read it, but I do remember really quite enjoying it for the most part. 
the last book on our shelf. I found this at Zaver's a little while ago, um, and I have no idea if I'll read it. I mean, it's massive, and I've never been particularly drawn to the Golden Dawn tradition. I mean, obviously, the Golden Dawn has influences everywhere. I mean, Tarot owes so much to the Golden Dawn, and even just general um, magical modern traditions owe a lot to the Golden Dawn, I think, in a lot of cases. Um, but yeah, I just found this and I, I've seen it at shops where it's like $60, $80. Um, and so when I saw this at Savers, how much was it? Oh, there's my receipt. Five. <laughs> um, I couldn't not get it. Just out of interest and curiosity. Um, it looks fascinating, but it also looks like a big commitment. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure. That's why <laughs> it's on my bottom shelf for a reason, I guess. So I hope you enjoyed my bookshelf tour. I'm not really sure how these things are supposed to go. Um, I don't really think I should be showing, talking about every book because that would take all day. Um, so I hope after I finish editing it, editing it, this video comes together okay. Um, but the book I am reading at the moment is The Conscious Activist by James O'Day, O'Dea, O'Dea. I feel like I should know how to say that. Um, and I'm really enjoying it so far. So far I've just read the first half. Um, which is pretty much just about his experience um, as a mystic or spiritual person and an activist um, and kind of his journey, basically, um, and his experiences. And the second half of the book, apparently, is supposed to be a little bit more about um, how those two sides of ourselves, the mystic and the activist, can kind of come together um, and what those two things mean for us as individuals. Um, I don't really have any set in stone thoughts about him and his message and his book just yet but as far as just reading it goes I'm, I'm enjoying the process of reading it so far but I really should be heading to bed because it's getting quite late um, so I will see you all in the morning much love guys bye